Hey guys and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Uh, this is the sixth tutorial in the first Steps and Preparation series. Um, and as always, or nearly always, I have to first of all show you a few things that I either forgot to show you last time or that I didn't know last time. Now this time we're going to talk once again about the X and Topology mirror because I finally found out what the problem was there and yeah and we're still in edit mode um, as you might remember so let's just open a new blender file and let's first of all delete this delete the cube and let's add a sphere now first thing I'm going to show you is that topology mirror problem so let's just go to orthographic one to front view home button to actually see what we're doing here and that's going to edit mode now as you might as you might remember down here you got this X mirror option and if you check that and if you then move this vertex here you can see the corresponding vertex on the other side um, is also moved and the when the way blender does that is quite simple it just um, evaluates the position of this vertex and it says okay if there is a vertex on the other side of this set axis that has the exact same position however the uh, x value uh, inverted um, then I'm going to move that one as well as you can see here pretty simple and now if you um, press the apology mirror you can see this no longer wor works and that's rather strange because if you remember um, on that model I showed you that um, character face, it was actually possible. The exact same thing and it worked. Um, and the reason for that is quite difficult to understand. Now I just um, explained to you how Blender uses the X mirror. It's a little bit, di it's a little bit different and a little bit more difficult um, to understand how it uses the topology mirror. But what it basically does, it just looks at this vertex, for example, and says, okay, it's got one vertex to the left, one to the right, one on top and one um, below it. And then it's got one over here, and one over here, and it actually evaluates in what way um, the vertices around this vertex are arranged um, relative to this vertex. And dependent on that, it actually um, gives this vertex an ID, an ID number. And now if there is a ver another vertex in this mesh that has the same ID number, which means it has the same kind of environment, then if you move this vertex, the other one will be moved as well. Now with this sphere, it is a problem because all the vertices have basically the exact same environment because this is a very, a very um, even shape. shape. And therefore it doesn't work. So what you need to do in order for this to work, you need to somehow mess up the topology. You m need to make it uneven, okay? So that each um, vertex can, so to say, take that irregularity as a, um, as a reference. Now if you model a complex mesh, like for example a head or something like that, there is no need for that, okay? There you don't need to worry about this at all. But for example here, all you have to do is just um, go into front view and for example merge those two together and do the same thing over here. And now you can see it works. And that's all you need to do. Because now um, this irregularity is um, relative to this vertex for example in a certain position. and that this um, kind of connection is different for every other vertices, therefore every other vertice can get its own ID. Um, a little bit complex, however if you want to use this function and XMIR doesn't suffice, then you know what you have to do, just mess up the mesh. Um, I think as soon as you add a triangle, um, it should actually work right away. For example, if you go out of edit mode, delete this sphere, and now if we add a monkey, if you go back into edit mode and if we check once again X mirror and topology mirror, you can see that now it actually works. Because this is a rather more complex um, topology than we had with this 
with uh, this sphere and therefore we don't have any issues. But now for example let's go into front view once again and let's this time add a icosphere. Now by the way the difference between ICO and UV sphere is that an icosphere is made up of triangles. Now if we go into edit mode right here and if we use X and topology mirror I guess nothing will happen once again exactly because once again every vertex has the exact same ID number because the environment is the exact same okay and one other thing to note is that with the X mirror alone it will just um, use the position of this vertex to evaluate its partner so to say but if you um, use a topology mirror it will no longer no longer consider on the position as far as I know but only the ID that is given according to what's next to this vertex and so on I hope I was able to uh, clear things up a little bit. It is a rather difficult thing to explain. Um, also, you don't need to know how it works. You just need to know how to make it work, so to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let's delete this icosphere and let's add... Um, let me just see. Let's add a monkey. Rx 45 degrees. And let's go into edit mode. Now the second thing I didn't tell you last time was about those three menus. Now they are similar to um, the way they work in object mode, however there are a few differences. But in view I guess they're pretty much the same. You've got once again tool shelf and properties panel, um, all your views, um, your cameras, switching between uh, view or perspective or orthographic, thumb navigation help, align view, um, the same things as we used before and therefore I think yeah completely the same. Now it already differs quite a bit in select mode. Once again we have border and circle select, those are the same, you can select things with a circle and keep in mind that nothing is going to be selected on the back side unless you have this box checked over here and now it actually selects the, also the things behind. And now select, deselect all and inverse selection is the same thing. You select one vertex, you go to inverse and you can see everything besides this vertex is selected. Now here um, start the differences. Random just means that it selects a number of vertices completely randomly. Okay. And every n number of verti vertices, if you select that, you can see a little context menu appears over here. And right now every second vertex is selected. Now it's kind of hard to know in what way Blender does that, but if you play around with, with those settings you can see the higher the number, the less happens. Um, <laughs> Let's go to zero, zero, oh, num lock, zero, two is the minimum, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm not quite sure how this works, um, but let's go with a more simple model, let's for example add a UV sphere once again, edit mode, and now let's go to select every n number of vertices, second, third, fourth, fifth, you can see the number of vertices selected actually decreases until no vertex is left. Um, perfect. Now let's go back into object mode once again, delete the sphere and let's once again add the monkey. Rx 45 degrees. Okay, now with sharp edges. Um, this way you can actually select edges dependent on how um, on how sharp the angle is. So let's unselect everything and let's make it so it is long, no longer transparent. And now let's go to select a sharp edge. And you can see a certain value down here. And right now I think no nothing's selected because apparently even the sharpest edges of this um, model aren't sharp enough. But now if you increase this value you will see that more and more vertices are selected. until with 180 degrees every vertex is obviously selected. Let's go to 30 degrees, 
we actually don't do not have even one one angle that is 30 degrees or less now let's go to 50 and you can see we've got our very first one over here yeah that's how this selection tool works then we've got link linked flat faces and that's actually pretty familiar you have however to go into face select mode and you have to select one face and now if you go to uh, linked f flat faces what happens every face connected to this one or connected to another one connected to this one is going to be selected if um, the angle between those um, faces is less than 135 degrees or more than 135 degrees if you go to 180 nothing is selected except for this face and then if you decrease you can see more and more faces are going to be added until with zero degrees obviously everything is selected now interior face I'm not quite sure what that does um, yeah as I said I'm not really sure what that's supposed to do now side of active if you select an active vertex for example this one and you hit side of active it will select something and it selects basically everything to one side of the vertex I'm not quite sure how it evaluates which side to use um, but somehow it just knows how to do it okay so if you select this one only only the ear will be selected I guess perfect now the triangles um, with this it just selects all the triangles oh you have to go to face select mode all the triangles and you can see all the triangles are selected or the other way around select all the, the quads and now all the quads are selected and as a, as a little reminder if you model something always try to avoid using triangles and always use quads now with a uh, similar um, it actually selects all your vertices at your faces according to some um, <laughs> criteria. Can you say criteria? Yes, you can. For example, let's select this face. And now if you go to Similiar, you have a couple of options. Material, then it will select all the faces that have the same material applied. Image, I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. If you maybe something maybe it's got something to do with the texture texture otherwise I don't know area here you got a threshold if you move that up you can see more and more stuff is going to be selected according to its area um, don't ask me what the area is supposed to be I don't know then we've got um, perimeter this is also some topology kind of um, term. I'm not quite sure what that is either, but if you increase it, you can see more and more things are getting selected. Quite similar actually to area. I'm not really sure what the difference is there, but I'm sure there is one. And then normal. And this one's qu quite simple to explain now because I already talked. We already talked about normals. Every normal that is in some way similar to the normal of this face, um, it's it's its face will be selected so to say okay so if this normal is like is somehow like this and there's another face that has the exact same normal or a similar normal it will also be selected so if we increase the th threshold you can see it starts with this one and you can see that it is very likely that those edges ha uh, those faces have similar normals because they appear to point in a similar direction and Mm -hmm. Where were we? Oh yeah, exactly, under the familiar. Now, loose words or edges, this is something that should not display anything Anything if I select it. Because there aren't any loose vertices or edges. However, if for example we go into vertex select mode, we take this vertex, we duplicate it, and we move it up here. This is quite hard to make up because it's, because it's so it's so small, but you never want any loose edges or vertices because they d they aren't really rendered since they do not have a face they do not have any 
actual geometry, just just the vertex. So if you go to this, you can see it is going to be selected, then you can just delete it or work on it some more, however you want. Um, next thing is less and more. So for example, if you select this face, you can with control plus on your numpad, as you can see, select more things or less things. However, uh, by the way, if you select everything and you hit plus or minus, nothing happens. And I'm actually not sure if this is because those eyes are not really part of the geometry. Let's just so only select the monkey and now with minus and plus. Okay, nothing happens. So if you have everything selected, you cannot use this more or less um, function. Now, um, mirror. That's actually quite a tricky one. If I select a vertex, for example, this one, and now if I go to mirror, it will um, select this one and um, delete this selection, so to say, unselect this vertex. However, if I go to face select mode, if I select this face, now if I go to mirror, nothing happens, you could think. But now if I go to vertex select mode, suddenly both faces are selected. Now I'm not sure if this is some kind of bug or some kind of mistake that Blender makes. Um, well, if you know the problem, it's not such a big deal. However, I thought it, I found it a bit strange when I noticed. Anyway, and the same thing is supposed to also work with edges. And as you can see, once again, rather weird, you select an edge, you hit mirror, nothing happens. And then if you go to vertex select mode, it suddenly did um, change the selection. However, now it once again um, un unselected this edge. So there's some kind, this is not very consistent in my opinion, uh, but anyway. Now you can also select things according to length. And this might sound rather suspicious and difficult, but it's quite simple. Every everything in any way linked to this vertex will be selected. So we actually did this before when deleting this middle part of the um, of the mesh generated by this screw function over here. So just hit Control L and everything connected will be selected. Or the other way, just hover over your mesh and click L and it, the same thing happens. Okay, then a uh, vertex path. This is also quite funny. You just select two vertices and then you go to select path and it will in some way connect those two vertices with a um, selection path, so to say. Next thing is the edge loop. We already know what that is. Um, you select one vertex and then you just hit the edge loop and it doesn't do anything. Let's just select an edge and then once again let's go to select edge loop. And you can see um, it selected the corresponding edge loop. Okay, now for um, edge ring, let's just change to a UV sphere because this is slightly di difficult to illustrate on this model. So let's delete this monkey and let's add a UV sphere over here. Let's time into edit mode and now Let's see. If I select this um, this edge, and if I go once again to edge loop, it selects the loop that goes around this sphere. Now, if I go to edge ring, it kind of selects this stuff. Now, this doesn't really look like a ring, and I don't really know why this function is called edge ring, okay? But it kind of selects edges that are um, parallel to this, to the previous edge, or just on the opposite side of, of a face, so to say. And it does that until it actually reaches the end of a certain region, okay? And because of, because we just talked about the regions, let's take a look at the next two um, functions. Loop to region and region to loop. And as you might guess, one function is kind of the opposite of the other. So let's select this loop and with shift, alt, right click, select this loop. And now if you go to loop to region, everything in between will be selected, all the faces. And therefore we now have a region selected. And the other way around, region to loop, it takes 
any region you want really and it just only selects um, the surrounding loops so to say okay now that's it for the select menu <clears throat> now let's move on to the mesh menu um, this is one of the more difficult ones because some functions in here don't even work in edit mode okay although it's supposed to be context sensitive I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure why that is um, but anyway now undo is control set as you might should know already redo is shift control set now redo just means that it's not the sa exactly the same thing as repeat um, it's kind of like this you move this around with control set you can undo this and with with control shift set you can undo the undone so to say and what you can also do let's just say you move th that around a couple of times and now you go to uh, to mesh undo history with control alt set and now you can choose what action in the past you'd like to um, undo so let's say we'd like to undo this translation here and you can see um, it does exactly what we wanted to now that's like the simple stuff let's just go back a couple of times okay now transform this is one of the most difficult um, sub menus in this menu um, grab move rotate and scale we're pretty familiar with that already now to sphere shear warp and push pull those are things I'd like to illustrate in the object mode now if you remember when we went over this menu in um, object mode we did not cover to sphere shear warp and push or pull we did however cover push and pull here in the mesh tools in the edit mode but let's just uh, real quick also do that in object mode because those things are kind of difficult to illustrate in edit mode okay so let's go to object mode and now let's just um, duplicate this um, sphere a couple of times okay I guess that's enough now let's go to front view and make sure um, you're in orthogra orthographic view and now under object let's go to transform and now you can see those options here to sphere, shear and warp now let's just first of all select all those sph spheres and if you remember under select you can go to select all by type and you can go to mesh and since we only have those spheres in the scene at our mesh only those sphere spheres will be selected okay now under transform go to sphere and you can see something happens and down here in the corner you can see a number okay and that number actually varies between 0 and 1 with 0 doing nothing and 1 um, moving it completely to a sphere now let's accept this with uh, a value of 1 and now it's kind of difficult to see the sphere in here however if you go to shift s curves to select it shift a um, uv sphere and now if you scale this sphere up a little bit until it actually touches all those um, other spheres about like this I guess you can see all those spheres are arranged on the surface of of, of, a, of another sphere and that's what the uh, sphere tool does okay now once again let's select all the meshes now let's go to um, shear okay um, this is shift control alt s now first of all let's go to front view shift control alt s and you can see this happens um, and in a way the 3d cursor is like is like um the center okay so if there's something on this line where the 3d cursor is it is not affected at all for example this sphere here it seems like it moves barely at all I think it doesn't move at all um, and everything that's above this 3d cursor is moved to the left and everything below it to the right and here you can see this shearing effect okay and um, next thing is the warp now what this does this is for example handy if you want to have like a text and you want to warp that text around the sphere okay so 
if you like to watch movies, maybe you've seen the um, that opening thing from Universal Studios. It's like an Earth, and then Universal Studio the text is warped around this Earth. And let's just real quick do that with spheres. So let's delete all those spheres. Let's reposition our 3D cursor. Let's add another sphere. Let's scale it up. This is our Earth. Now let's add another sphere. Let's go to top view. Let's move this one a little bit out of out of here. For example, over here. Perfect. Now let's duplicate this a, a couple of times. like this and maybe just twice more okay now let's select all those spheres and let's make sure that the 3d cursor is inside this sphere now let's go to transform warp and you can see it does exactly what we wanted to do it actually warps around this sphere and that's just perfect yeah now let's delete all those spheres again, we don't need them. And let's go back to edit mode. And let's just real quick try those things in edit mode. So if I go to sphere, nothing should happen because this already is a sphere. However, if I, for example, use, you move this over here, selecting everything, mesh, um, transform to sphere. And if I now go to one, you can see it did what exactly what it did in the object mode, it just moved those vertices outwards until they once again um, touch the surface of this sphere. Okay, control Z. Now, well, it's the exact same thing for warp and for shear. So, if I go to one and I go to shear, which is control shift alt S, you can see it does the exact same thing. Cool. Now, mirror. This is, uh, I think we covered this before. With Control M, you're supposed to be able to um, set this mirror. However, in my case, this doesn't really do anything, okay? Therefore, you can also, if it works for you with Control M, then that's fine. If it doesn't, then just um, hit the space bar. And by the way, with the space bar, you can also um, execute commands. For example, you can say push. And you can see the push-pull command that is over here can also be executed this way. And we're going to type in mirror and we're going to select this one. And let's just, before we do that, let's just um, reposition our 3D cursor over here, for example. Well, let's, let's put it over here. Okay, once again, mirror. Okay. And now you can see down here, select the mirror axis, X, Y, or C. And I'm going to select X which it doesn't apparently, oh, I just noticed something. It, it's mirrored um, on the um, origin. So let's go out of edit mode. Let's go to origin to 3D cursor. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's select everything. And let's once again go to mirror, control M. Now let's say X. And it still doesn't do anything really. Okay, let's just delete all... Oh, maybe I also have to go to 3D cursor with my selection. Now, once again, mirror, control M, X. Yeah, here we go. And you can see it actually, it's actually mirrored on one of those axes that go through the, um, the selection, in this case, where the 3D cursor is. So the repositioning of this um, origin was completely useless. Okay. As you might notice, I've never used the mirroring tool in, in edit mode, okay? I did use it a couple of times in um, in object mode, because here it's also rather handy. And here actually it also works with Control M, I guess. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back into edit mode and let's go to um, select... Uh, you can do it in here, okay. Origin to geometry. Perfect. Now, next thing we have here is UV unwrap. Those are the UV unwrapping tools I showed you before. A little bit more in detail. We're going to cover this. We're going to cover this a little bit more in detail 
in a later tutorial because right now this is a bit too early so let's just skip that then extrude region extrude individual add duplicate and delete we already know those things from over here region individual delete and what was the last one add duplicate is over here duplicate now we also have vertices and here are a few quite cool options um yeah let's go over those merge we know that already with alt m rip is also kind of cool just select a couple of vertices or edges in this case and now you can hit the v key on your keyboard okay and it depends on whether your mouse is over here or over here by the time you execute the command so let's go over here let's hit v and you can see it is now ripped apart Control Z to undo that. And if we go over here and uh, press V, you can uh, move the other part and position however you want. Okay, then we also have this um, split tool over here. If you go to Y, and now you can see it's actually duplicated, so to say, okay? Now if we select the whole region, let's go to vertex select mode, and now we hit Y. Once again, the same thing. However, it isn't the same as duplicate because it actually um, it just selects this region and then if you go to, to um, split, it just um, disconnects it from the surrounding vertices. Okay, now the next thing is separate. And this sounds very similar to split. However, it does, and this is quite important. Now that we selected those, if we go to hit P, which is separate, and you go to selection, and now you can see this is no longer um, edit editable, so to say. So now if you go out of edit mode, you can see this is a separate mesh. And that's how you create um, a mesh, a second object out of one mesh. Okay, then let's go to smooth vertex. We already know that. Remove doubles as well. Vertex sort, vertex randomize. Um, this is kind of like the order in which the um, vertices are numbered or something like that. I never used that before. Um, if we ever should in our tutorials, I'm gonna tell you how to. Um, and if you need more information, just look it up in the wiki documentations of Blender or somewhere. Select vertex path. We've used that before as well. This is actually more like something that should appear over here. Um, vertex path. I think it's the same thing. Let's just select two vertices. Let's go to mesh, vertices, select vertex path. It's the exact same thing. Okay, now um, let's delete this string of vertices. We don't need it. Okay, and then um, here we were. Okay, now blend from shape blend vertex group and shape propagate those are things you mainly need or only need in if you work with uh, shape keys and shape keys are those things i accidentally actually accidentally showed you with my character mesh you know when you could see her facial expression was animated with shape keys and that's a little bit advanced so let's just skip that for now uh, so the next thing we're going to look at is our vertex groups. However, this once again is something we did not yet cover. And finally then, we take a look at this very last option here, hooks. And they are really cool, okay? I only discovered them recently. Well, actually a few months ago, but yeah, here we go. And to show you how this works, let's just select a few, select a few vertices, okay? For example, let's just take C and let's just widely select a few of those because you can get a quite a cool cool effect this way okay that's okay now let's go to mesh vertices hooks hooks hook to new object okay and I can see this thing here that looks like an empty if you know what an empty is um, and now let's go out of edit mode and you can move this empty and the vertices are so to say parented to this empty in a way and if you move this one you can see you get this weird looking thing so it's pretty cool and that's one way to um, manipulate the vertices without going into edit mode of course you have to set it up in edit mode but you know what I mean okay, let's go back a couple of times uh, 
actually here we go okay and okay so with this um keep try to keep the hooks in mind they're pretty cool i'm sure you're going to use them in the future sometimes um and then we go to edges now here once again a few things we already know make edge face with f okay that's just so for example if you have a vertex over here and one over here you can ju just select both and then hit f and you can see this vertex and now if you hit another vertex go f again you can actually create a face in this case a triangle which you should avoid <coughs> Delete face. Okay. Now the next thing in edges is mark or clear seam. We've we looked at this already. This is for actually a um, UV unwrapping something. Then mark sharp and clear sharp. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about this already. Um, but if you remember, with this option over here, when you can actually tag, um, select or tag mark your edges, there was also this tag sharp, okay? And this is something you use together with a um, edge split modifier, okay? So, um, the problem is that we did not yet cover the modifiers at all, so let's just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, we will soon enough, we will soon enough, so be patient. And then rotate edge clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? So let's, for example, say we're in edge select mode, and you have this edge here, and now you have one quad over here and one quad over here. But you could also set this edge so that you have one quad over here and one quad over here. So if you go to mesh, um, edges, rotate clockwise, you can see now you have it arranged in exactly this way. Or, um, as the name implies, counterclockwise. Cool. Now the next thing is um, edge slide, we know that already, edge crease. Um, we talked about this already as well, I guess, I'm not quite sure. We will cover this in, um, actually I wanted to cover this in this tutorial, but this tutorial already dragged out for too long, so it's gonna be covered in the next tutorial. Um, it's got something to do with, over here, this is the same thing with crease, okay? So if you select this, you can add, uh, increase the crease over here. or with shift E as you were able to see just here, um, shift E, and I can actually increase it or decrease it this way. Okay, then the next thing is edge loop, we, we know that already, edge ring and loop to reach and reach into loop, those things are the exact same thing as we have over here, okay. Not quite sure why they're added here again, but I guess it's because of the shortcuts, because you can, with, with control E, you can actually call this menu as well, and then it is handy to have those three functions in here as well. Okay, and now with the faces. Um, also a few exciting options. Flip normals, the same thing as we have over here. Flip direction under normals. Okay. Next thing are is make edge face. Same as I showed you just before with F. Fill is Alt F. Now the difference between, um, here we were, Different be difference between fill and beautiful is quite significant. Let's just, um, how to do this? Let's actually delete this sphere, let's add a plane, let's delete plane, let's reposition our cursor, let's now add a plane. Let's go to top view, let's go to edit mode, and let's just extrude this a couple of times. with E and X, by the way. Now let's just go to select everything. Um, yeah, now let's just uh, delete the... Um, <laughs> now let's just delete all the faces in the middle. So the way we do that, just select everything and now with Shift, Alt, select, let's deselect this um, row of edges and same over here, delete edges. Now let's go to vertex select mode, you can see two lines of vertices, okay? Now if we select, let's just connect them over here, F and over here, okay? Now if you want to fill this in in a fast way, you can just select everything, go to mesh, faces, fill. And you can see it is filled, however, 
this is everything but beautiful. I mean, you've got all those triangles, another single quad. This is just ugly. So with Control Z, let's redo that, and now let's go to Faces Beautiful. And apparently, nothing happens. Okay, and the reason for that is that it doesn't actually fill something, it just um, changes an existing um, amount of faces. So let's once again go to Mesh, Faces, Fill, and now let's go to Mesh, Faces, Beautify, Fill. And you can see it changed a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say it's that much more beautiful than before. Um, if you take a look at this. Yeah, but it's a, st a little bit better, okay? Yeah, not something I use often. Because if you want to get a decent result, just go to edge select mode. Select those two um, edges up, uh, opposite to each other and then you'll just hit F. This is actually the way you should select. Uh, you should fill in faces. Okay. Now, next thing is solidify. Okay. I'm not sure, if, I think we didn't yet talk about this, but this is pretty cool. Uh, let's just delete this. Let's delete the whole object. Let's add a monkey. Rotate X 45 degrees. And now let's go to set to wireframe mode. Wireframe view actually. And now let's select everything and let's go to solidify. Um, here we go. This is pretty cool. Now you can see it added like a second layer of this monkey. And it actually added a thickness to it, so to say, okay? This is not a separate mesh, actually. You can see here. Um, this is kind of hard to see. Let's just delete the eye and this one as well. He doesn't need to see anything. If you can see, it's actually um, a, so a s uh, one row of... All the vertices are in some way connected, so it's not a separate duplication or something, it's actually a solidifying thing. So you can see it's now got a certain thickness with two layers of vertices, okay? And that's pretty cool because it automatically corrects um, th certain things like sharp angles. So um, in order to explain that, let's just delete everything. Let's add a plane. Let's rotate on the x-axis for 90 degrees. And now let's just add a couple of vertices, okay? Let's just add Move this one over here, this one over here, for example, this one over here, and so on. Doesn't really matter too much. Okay, and now if you go to solidify here, you can see it does that just perfectly. Okay, you can see it actually now is solid okay so it also it's also connected on this side over here and it does that with actually counting that or, or thinking about the fact that this is a very sharp edge okay and to create something like this without this this function is quite difficult okay and now the next thing is sort faces this is exactly the same or a similar function like um, sort vertices as I said, let's not worry about those too much. You're not going to need them anytime soon. Now, make, make F-Gon or clear F-Gon. By the way, F-Gons are also referred to as N-Gons. And with that, with F-Gons, we're talking about um, a polygon, like a quarter triangle, that has just more than four vertices. So, for example, let's just delete everything once again. Let's add a monkey in here for, for once. R45, enter, R90, minus, enter. Okay, here we go. I just had some trouble um, um, clearing its rotation or, or re rotating it. And now let's go to red press set, and now let's just enable this thing so I can see everything. Or actually, let's disable this. Okay, now this, this is a quad, okay? And now if we make a face that's more than just four vertices, for example, um, six. Let's delete this edge. You can with make F gone. You can actually create a face out of this many vertices. Oh, actually, um, I just noticed something. You have to make those faces again. Now let's select both faces. 
and now mesh faces make F gone. You can see you now have a face that go, uh, that includes six vertices. However, in reality, this isn't really such, such a big difference. So, if you don't have to, never use this function. I think I never used it before, and I didn't miss it at all. I can in no way see how this is actually um, handy. Because even if, for example, you want to make a face with... Um, because you can see it is still handled as if those there were two faces with four vertices. So I guess in some very specific cases this can be useful, however I don't know what that should be good for. Control set, here we go. Okay, now let's go back to vertex select mode. Next thing, quads to trace. Okay, so you just you select a quad. You go to mesh, faces, quads to trace. And you can see um, it changes to triangles. Next thing is um, trace to quads, the other way around. Actually, quads to trace, and then if you go to trace to quads, the other way around. Um, as you can see, this has the shortcut Alt-J. However, this shortcut here, F, is much faster, and if you go, if you have two triangles and you hit F, it does the exact same thing as Alt-J, so let's just remember F as the shortcut. Then Edge Flip. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to do. Um, let's just try this. May mesh Faces Edge Flip. Nothing, that's, that's good. Let's select an edge, because we're talking about edges here anyway. Nothing. Okay, so um, let's not worry about this one too much. I don't know what it does, never used it before. Probably not so important. Then Shade Smooth and Shade Flat, the exact same thing as over here, Smooth and Flat. Next thing is Rotate Edge Clockwise. Not quite sure why that is once again um, shown in here, because we already had that in here, okay? I'm sure there's a reason for that. Then rotate UVs, mirror UVs, not important right now. Rotate colors, mirror colors. Let's just let's just forget about those options because they as before probably useful in some very specific cases. Uh, I however never use them. Now about the normals, we've talked about those before. Recalculate outside, recalculate inside, flip normals. Now recalculate outside is this thing over here, is just recalculate. Flip direction is the same thing as flip normals, and recalculate inside is just the opposite of this one. So okay, so let's just in our properties panel go to face. Now you can see, looks a little bit hairy that guy. Now you can see all the normals. Now if you select everything, now let's just for example let's first of all mess up those here. Let's go to flip direction. Okay. Now you can see. Oh my God, there are a few faces and their normals face in the wrong direction. So what you do, you hit A to select everything and you go to recalculate. And now it is recalculated in a way that all the normals face to the outside. Now if you don't want that, by the way the shortcut is Control N, you can just hit sh Control Shift N and now all the all of them um, look to the inside. Now I'm not sure, yeah, exactly. And because, let me just see, because some um, normals are so long they actually come out of the other side and it looks as if those faces had some messed up normals but they don't so don't worry um, let's just recalculate with control N cool next thing um, is auto merge auto merge editing okay and this is quite handy if you enable this then um, whenever two vertices are pretty close together, they are automatically merged. Okay, so for example, if right here I scale them together, you can see still nothing. Still nothing, actually. Still nothing. But, and here we go. Now, now they're merged, okay? And this is pretty handy. For example, if you remember... Um, the face, uh, the face, the mesh we created with this uh, screw function. We had to remove all the doubles because 
um, they were on top of each other. And if we had enabled this beforehand, um, all the merge editing, that would not have been necessary. Okay, um, this is pretty cool. Now proportional editing, disable, enable, connected. Same thing as over here. And finally, the fall off types, same thing as over here. And show hide, I think we talked about this before. Um, hide everything with H, with Alt H, unhide everything. And what was the last one? Hide unselected, okay. This is also pretty cool. For example, if you duplicate your monkey a few times. And now you just want to work on this monkey. You can just hit, um, with it, Shift H. Uh, let's go to edit mode. Shift H, okay. For example, we're working on this part. So with Shift H, everything else is hidden. But that should also work in um, object mode. So with Shift H, everything else is hidden. Perfect. Okay, now about the properties panel, this is the last thing um, we're going to talk in this tutorial. It's going to be a huge tutorial once again, anyway. Um, about the transform options here, we've got median, okay? So if you select several vertices, then the median point is actually right now where my selection is, because down here I got median point selected, okay? And now, here you can just see the position of your median point. Now we can actually move this to the left or to the right or to, whatever, to wherever we want. So let's put it back to zero. That's not where it originally was, was it? It was at this number. Okay. And then one other cool thing is global and local. Right now this is local. So if I move everything, um, so, no, so if I move the monkey over here, you can see those numbers didn't change. Um, well, they did because I selected a different area, but once again, you can see 1.035. Now I'm going to move it along the y-axis. Back into Edmund, you can see this is still 1.035. But if I go to global, you can see this is 3.275. And now if I move the whole monkey, you can see um, the number changed. Because global means that the reference point is here. And local means the reference point is the origin of our monkey, which is exactly, where is it? Here, here it is. Down here. Okay. The next thing is, next thing is mean crease and mean bevel weight. Um, the mean crease is used to when you use a subdivision surface, now a subdivision surface is, our, our, is a modifier, so we didn't yet cover modifiers, therefore I'm not going to talk too much about mean creases. And bevel weight is a similar thing that you use with um, the bevel modifier, which is also a modifier, unfortunately. Okay, But both things can be applied to um, edges. So if you increase the mean crease, you can see it turns pink, and the bevel weight, it turns Nothing at all. Let's just see. Oh, okay. You have to um, select bevel weights down here. You can see still nothing at all. Um, let's go to edge. Oh, here we go. In edge mode, you can actually see how it is beveled now. And more on that later. Um, and then grease pencil. This is the exact same thing as in object mode. View. This is once again the same thing as in object mode. 3D cursor. Same thing as in object mode. Item. Same thing as in object mode. Now under display, this is also the exact same thing, I guess, yeah, as in object mode. Nothing new here. Motion tracking, same. Under mesh display, you can actually see uh, change a few things. Now with uh, those options here, you can actually change um, what and how things are displayed. Um, and you do that with those first few options. They're called overlays, okay? That just means with this option, you change what is overlaid over the existing geometry uh, visually. So, for example, you can see bevel weights. Now, if I uncheck that, over those edges, uh, the bevel lines are no longer overlaid. Okay. Um, but there are more basic things also, edges and faces. Okay, now let's go to, go to face select mode, and let's select a couple of faces like this. 
you can see all of them are orange except for the one that we just selected the last selection so to say now if we uncheck faces you can see they are outlined but they're no longer in any way differently colored than the rest okay and same goes for edges interesting enough interestingly enough if you go to edge select mode now we ch uncheck edges nothing happens but if we go to vertex select mode and now we uncheck edges you can see the edges are once again black only the vertices are highlighted in orange or white okay then the next thing is creases um, let's for example increase the mean crease always sounds a little bit funny now it's pink and if we uncheck it it is no longer visual vis visible um, zero okay and then we also have seams the seams are the red things we used to unwrap it so mark seam where is it where is it here mark seam you can see now it's red if we uncheck it it is no longer shown and by the way if it is unchecked and you mark a seam somewhere usually it automatically um, checks it okay same goes for sharp and if you remember, you could also do those things down here, tag sharp, tag seam. So if we select tag sharp, now if we control click on a edge, it gets tagged sharp. And here once again, sharp was automatically activated. If we deactivate, you can no longer see it. Cool. Now, normal size. If we increase it, they become longer, okay? That's one thing to note. So you can make something very funny here. Boom. Anyway, um, let's put us back one to point one. Uh, and you can change between face and vertex. If you uncheck uncheck both, you cannot see the normals. If you go to vertex, you can see now the normals appear where the vertices are. You can also check both. And yeah, this looks even hairier than before. Anyway, that's not what it's supposed to be f good for. Point one. Okay, now let's uncheck both. We don't need them from now on. Now with numerics. Okay, this is pretty cool. If we, if you are, blah, if you come from the CAD side, you know, from a company or a factory that actually produces mechanical stuff, then you will love this one. Edge length. And now you can actually, whenever you select an edge, you can see how long it is in Blender units. Okay. Oh, and by the way, not sure if I told you that yet. This square is actually one blender unit in square okay one blender unit one blender unit and so on so this edge actually is has the length of 0 0.237 blender units okay and blender units are actually a blender's internal measuring system so to say you use them for example by defining how fat a hair strand is and so on then you can also um, make Blender display the face angles, well, just the angles between faces, as you can see here, 70 degrees, 71.8 degrees, 104 degrees, and so on. And you can also make it display the face area. And I guess this is pretty much in square Blender units, so this is 0 0.0208 square Blender units. So with, with other words, um, This is a bit annoying to calculate because we don't have any right angles in here. But this um, area has an area of 0 0.02108 uh, um, blender units in square. Okay. Oh my gosh, those things are so hard to explain in English. Um, and yeah, then we're pretty, pretty much through. Background images, same thing as in object mode. You can use them in object oriented mode, of course. Transform orientations, you can also still create your custom transform orientations, you know as I told you before, I guess. And one thing I forgot to mention until now is this blend rig thing down here. Now, this is not some, something you should worry about because I'm pretty sure your blender does not display this, okay? This is an add-on I used to um, rig a character, so um, that's why it's here. Usually you cannot see this and it is not important right now. Okay, now we actually finished this tutorial. Um, it, dragged out way, it dragged out way longer than it... I s thought it would. Um, well, actually, the same thing as it usually happens. But anyway, we're through with it. 
and now we're also through with the 3D viewport, more or less. There are still lots of things we didn't cover, for example, what is sculpt, vertex, paint, texture paint, and weight paint mode. However, let's not worry about those too much. For now, we will discover them in the future, and um, yeah. Um, I hope you're not bored by now, because we're still just doing the very dry stuff. We're coming to the fun part uh, shortly, I hope. Um, and yeah, if you have any comments, questions, ideas, or inputs, or whatever, post them in the comments below the video, please. And thank you for watching, and see you next time.